Well, good afternoon and welcome. Semi-finals day here at the ASB Classic for 2016 and a marvellous lineup we have. There is so much on offer. World-class talents in both the doubles and the singles. And, of course, a New Zealand influence as well coming up later, the final match tonight. But for now, it is the very well-travelled and well-credentialed pairings of Buderak and Lipsky and Noll and Marak. This will be a fairly one-sided highlights package. Lipsky's had a couple of the overheads to put away. They've been sharp at the nets. And most of these encounters, the Americans have come out on top. Well, they're a class team, Diderak and Lipsky. They do the basics well. Fundamentals of good first serves, good volleys. Really, they weren't challenged much in that first set. Second set. They were really subpar, the Austrian team. Whilst the uh, second set was uh, a little closer at 6-4, really, it was uh, always destined to go the one way. And that was uh, in favour of the Americans. Marak did his best to lift and try and lift his partner. He did, and he returned well in the second set for the Americans. But you've got to play well as a team in doubles. You've got to play well together at the same time. And it's disappointing for Oliver that Julian Noll wasn't able to come up with enough good returns to give them a chance to break back in that second set and the way that the American team was serving. So it was pretty clinical. So delight for Lipsky and Buderak as they chase uh, respectively their first title here in New Zealand at the ASB Classic. That service percentage at 44 just far too low. Buderak and Lipsky, that's not anything to write home about either. But uh, they were always in control. And you look at the unforced errors, 19 for the Austrians against the 15 of the Americans. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Auckland on a stunner of a day. Semi-finals day at the ASB Classic and it's time for some singles action. And it's a man who's so familiar to New Zealand tennis fans. And he's got that many stamps in the passport for New Zealand that he might well be close to getting some sort of residency, you know. David Ferrer, his seventh semi-final. He's a four-time champion. And every time he conducts himself so professionally. He's up against a man that goes by one of two nicknames, and they both tell you the story. Jay Sizzle or Showtime. J.D. Jones uh, this promises, and I've said that before a few matches, and uh, almost every time this week they've delivered. Promises to be a thriller. Let's have a look at uh, how Ferrer went about dismantling, really, the game of sock in that first set. Both guys with the big forehand, it's where they're getting most of their winners from. And the big difference in this match, is, oh, for at least from the baseline play, is that Ferrer is able to play really well this backhand, keep it deep, drive the ball through the court, whereas Sock is not able to do that as much on that side. He had good moments in the set, Jack Sock, but it's not quite enough of them. It's a crucial service break. Coming at 30-40 with the, that forehand winner right there. In particular, that first break of serve, a combination of forehands, he'd pull David one way, then the other, and then look to transition. That was the crucial first break of serve. As mentioned, the backhand's really improved as this match has worn on. He's kept David Freer guessing, being very aggressive, mixing up his second serve a lot, throwing in the odd kicker and then the really hard one to the forehand. These third set highlights will be uh, one-sided just as the second set was. Look at the athleticism. He really was in the mood. Powerful winners off both sides, both wings. He got to the net. And he really did everything in, in that third set. Back sock and 
despite possibly the shot of the tournament from David Freer, everything else went the Americans' way. So aggressive. You mentioned his backhand, how that improved as the match went on, and audacious forehands from all over the court as well. And he showed no nerves, served it out with a plomb. Big second serve ace to close out the match. Well, here are the numbers. Uh, that's a serve percentage uh, almost irrelevant, it seemed. He found the big serves when required. The unforced error counts. It's deceptive because so many of those unforced errors from Sock came in the first set, and then he just switched off that tap.